If you, your friend, or your family member has been charged with a crime in Ontario's criminal justice system, you will most likely have thought about what might happen if you or your loved one is found guilty of that crime. There are more options available to the court than you are probably aware of. It is the role of your criminal defense lawyer to advocate for the lesser options if you are found guilty or if you choose to enter a guilty plea. In determining criminal punishment, judges consider the seriousness of the crime, the circumstances surrounding it, and your degree of responsibility. As part of your criminal defense, your lawyer will try to persuade the Crown Attorney or judge that the crime does not warrant the harshest punishment and argue for lesser alternatives. By the way, if you haven't heard of the term Crown Attorney, that is what prosecutors are called in Canada. When your lawyer is trying to reduce the severity of the punishment you receive, your defense lawyer will focus on something called mitigating factors. But what are some mitigating factors? The following list are some examples, but it is not a complete list. First, the crime you were convicted of was your first offense, meaning you had no other criminal record. Second, you were an accessory to the crime and you were not the principal actor. Third, you were under significant personal or financial stress. Fourth, you were found guilty of a nonviolent crime. The opposite of mitigating circumstances are called aggravating circumstances, and these may persuade the judge to increase the severity of your punishment. Aggravating factors could include the following. First, evidence that your crime was motivated by bias, prejudice, or hate. Second, evidence that you abused a position of trust or authority in relation to the victim. Third, the use of violence. Fourth, you used a weapon to commit a crime. And fifth, you have a previous criminal history. As you might already know, the process of deciding how to punish a person who is guilty of a crime is called sentencing. There are laws about sentencing in Canada's criminal code. Sentencing is based on several specific principles. Not all of the principles will apply to the situation. However, it's important to know what they are. The principles of sentencing are as follows. First is denunciation. This is the principle that the punishment should reflect the importance for society to condemn the crime committed. In other words, the punishment might represent a symbol of society's disapproval for the criminal activity that was committed. Second is deterrence. This is the principle that the punishment should discourage both the individual criminal and the general population from committing such crimes. Lawyers use a term called specific deterrence to refer to punishments that are intended to discourage that specific criminal from committing that crime again. And they use another term called general deterrence to refer to punishments that discourage the wider public from committing the crime. In other words, general deterrence is how the justice system could make an example out of someone and send a strong message to anyone else who might consider committing the same crime. Third, rehabilitation. This is the principle that the punishment is intended to change the behavior of the offender and help them become productive citizens. Fourth is protection of the public. This principle determines that the punishment should protect the public by jailing the offender or impose conditions designed to control the offender's behavior in order to ensure the safety of the public. Fifth is reparation. This is the principle that the punishment should repay, repair, or compensate the victim or community affected by the crime. And finally, we have six, responsibility. This is the principle that the punishment should compel the offender to acknowledge the harm they have caused to the victim and to the community. Overall, the court must impose a sentence that is proportional to the seriousness of the offense and the degree of responsibility of the offender. The court will consider, in addition to mitigating and aggravating factors, how similar crimes have been punished in the past, as well as any other special considerations. The court will not send someone to prison if lesser punishments are appropriate in the circumstances. Moreover, when more than one jail term is imposed for separate crimes, and each jail term is to be served consecutively, which means one after the other, then the court is required by law to consider if the total time spent in jail would be unduly long or harsh. In this video, we will explain the types of criminal punishments used in Ontario and under what circumstances they are used. We'll start from the least severe punishments and gradually explain more severe degrees of criminal punishment. The first type of punishment we'll be discussing is called an absolute discharge. If the court orders an absolute discharge, this means you will be free to go and no conviction will be registered. However, this still means your guilt is recorded. This concept can be slightly confusing because it seems odd that a person can be found both guilty of a crime but not convicted of that crime. The idea behind an absolute discharge is to avoid placing the stigma of a criminal conviction upon the guilty person. An absolute discharge is the lowest level sentence an adult can get and you will not have to return to court or report to a probation officer. 
The discharge will remain on your criminal record for one year from the date of the court order, and then it will be automatically removed. You do not have to apply or ask anyone to have it removed after that one year because the criminal justice system will take care of that on its own. The second type of punishment we'll be discussing is called a conditional discharge. This punishment is similar to an absolute discharge in the sense that you are found guilty but no conviction is recorded. However, there will be conditions placed on you for a specified time in the form of a probation order, which can be in effect from one to three years. The conditions in your probation order will relate to your conduct or the circumstances that led to the offense, such as not going to specific places or buildings, attending a program or undergoing treatment, and not drinking or using drugs. The discharge stays on your record for three years after the probation order is completed, at which time it is removed and becomes an absolute discharge. The third type of punishment we'll be discussing is called a suspended sentence. A suspended sentence is similar to a conditional discharge in the sense that conditions are imposed through a probation order for a period of one to three years. The difference is that a conviction will be on your record and you would have to apply for a pardon in order to have the conviction removed. In issuing a suspended sentence, the court is basically delaying setting a sentence of up to two years in prison whilst you are supervised by a probation officer and requiring you to follow the conditions in the probation order. A suspended sentence can include a fine and a conditional discharge. If you breach the conditions of your probation order, you may have new charges brought against you. Types of probation conditions imposed are generally about your behavior and relate to the circumstances of the offense, such as consumption of alcohol and drugs, possession of weapons, curfews, use of a computer, community service, and visiting, meeting, or contacting a specific person or persons. The fourth type of punishment we'll be discussing is called a fine, which is something you're probably already familiar with. If the court chooses to impose a fine, then your conviction will be registered on your criminal record and you will have to apply for a pardon to have it removed. A fine is a penalty you must pay to the court for committing an offense. The fine may be the only sentence or used in combination with other punishments, such as being sent to jail or being put on probation. However, a fine cannot be given with an absolute discharge, a conditional discharge, or a suspended sentence. If you do not pay the fine, then the federal or provincial government may penalize you by refusing to issue or renew a permit. As a last resort, a term of imprisonment may be imposed. Extensions to pay the fine will only be given if you can show you have tried your best to pay in the time given. The fifth type of punishment we'll be discussing is called a conditional sentence. You may be aware of the term house arrest. This option allows a judge to impose a sentence of less than two years, but it is served in the community instead of in jail. However, like in jail, there will be restrictions placed on you, such as curfews, restricted movement, or contact with specified people. The judge will only consider this if they are confident that you are not a danger to the public and the crime doesn't involve certain minimum and maximum prison terms. The sixth type of punishment is something that everyone is already familiar with, which is, of course, imprisonment. Imprisonment is the most serious punishment, as you will lose your liberty from anywhere between one day up to the rest of your life. A sentence of less than two years is served in a provincial correctional institution. However, if your sentence is two years or more, it will be served in a federal penitentiary. The seventh type of punishment is something called an intermittent sentence. This is where a sentence is less than 90 days and the court may order the sentence to be served in blocks of time, such as only on the weekends. This sentence will always be accompanied by a probation order to place conditions on you when you are not in jail. An intermittent sentence is only considered when your lawyer can persuade the judge that you have responsibilities that make it hard to serve a regular sentence, such as a job or child care. It is unlikely that an intermittent sentence will be considered if you have previously broken a probation order. The eighth type of punishment is something called an indeterminate sentence for dangerous offenders. This type of sentence has no end date and the Parole Board of Canada will review the case after seven years and every two years afterwards. The ninth type of punishment is a life sentence. If you are convicted of first or second degree murder, then a life sentence will be imposed. First degree offenders must serve at least 25 years before being eligible for parole. Those convicted of second-degree murder must serve somewhere between 10 and 25 years at the discretion of the judge. The tenth type of punishment is called restitution. Restitution is intended to be paid to the victim to compensate for losses resulting from the crime committed. The court is required to consider a restitution order for all offenses. A restitution can be considered on its own or as a condition of a conditional sentence or probation order. The last type of sentence we'll discuss in this video is called restorative justice. 
Restorative justice changes the focus of sentencing from punishment to repairing community relationships. Restorative justice requires the voluntary participation of the victim, the offender, and ideally also members of the community. This could take the form of a discussion, group conferencing, or healing circles and mediation with the goal of fixing the damage caused and preventing further crimes. Many people in and outside of Canada have benefited from restorative justice. With the right set of circumstances, many cases have shown that restorative justice can be more effective at preventing crime and healing the victim compared to other more traditional types of sentences. So now you have a basic understanding of the various types of criminal punishments in Ontario, which are also the same across the rest of Canada, since the entire country uses the same criminal code. If you or someone you know is in need of a criminal defense lawyer, feel free to give us a call or visit our website at kpalawyers.ca. Don't forget to like KPA Lawyers on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube for more content. We'll see you next time.